Well, it's still cold in New England, and this week we're moved around to the uh, starboard side of the vessel. John's getting a plank ready to go in. Uh, at this point, he's just fitting it. He'll take that plank down, and we'll put it in the steam box over here, and we'll steam it like we did the ones on the port side. But uh, while he's doing that, we'll go inside the vessel, and we'll show you the hold and uh, basically how this boat is put together. Uh, now we're standing in the hold of the beaver, and this would be a good opportunity to show how these vessels were built back in the colonial days. This type of construction is what they call plank on sawn frame. And this one very typical of what they had back in colonial days. Uh, we saw the planking go on the outside. And what we have here is actually planking on both sides of the frame. We have inside planking as well. And this is over sawn frames. Each of these frame sections is called a futtock and it is sawn from the log and bolted together. What we have here in this diagram is a cross-section of the construction of the beaver. Uh, we have the frames of each frame section, as we mentioned, is called the futtock, and that connects with the uh, floor timber, which is all part of the frame system of the vessel. And that connects with a uh, deck beam. And then we have the, uh, the keelson, which is the inside part of the keel and the keel, and this makes up the backbone of the, of the vessel. Uh, we've got outside planking, and which John was putting on the outside of the vessel. Inside we have what we call ceiling planking. Ceiling in a vessel is not the overhead, it's the inside planking. From there we've got the ship's knee, uh, which ties the deck beam to the sides of the vessel together, and the stanchion, which supports the deck beam from the uh, keelson. On deck, we've got deck planking, and as the top timbers go through the, the covering board, we've got the rail cap and the bulwarks. This is what they call a knee of a ship. Uh, this is actually made from the root of the tree, and we've got two types. We've got a hanging knee, and we also have a uh, lodging knee. And the lodging knee and the hanging knees tie the deck beams to the side of the vessel. Uh, from here, it's like we talked about before, we've got ceiling plank. This is all the ceiling plank, and you can see some of the frames behind here. Some of the ceiling plank we've been replacing. All of this has been replaced at an earlier haul-out, and this is some of the newer stuff we're putting in at this point. Where I'm standing in the bow of the beaver now is an area they would have called the forecastle, and that's where the, uh, the crew slept. The crew was called foremast hands because they slept ahead of the foremast. The foremast would have been right about here. Uh, as I continue back aft here, this area is the hold. Uh, the beaver, of course, was a whale ship, and she would have been filled, normally filled with barrels of oil. But of course, during the time of the tea party, she was filled with crates of tea. And as we continue back here, we'll go into the captain's quarters. All right, now we're back in the captain's cabin. Uh, this area here would have been occupied by just one man, where the uh, crew up forward, they had a few bunks for part of the crew, and the rest of the crew had to find a place in the cargo to sleep. Uh, this would be finished out on both sides here with uh, raised paneling, and across the uh, stern there, it's going to be windows called the uh, stern gallery. Well, we've seen a bit about how the beaver was constructed. Uh, it's getting warmer. After all, it's April and we should be getting into some more work on the outside of the vessel. We're starting to scrape and paint, and we'll be getting into caulking. We'll check back and see what John's, the progress that John has made on the planking, and uh, check back with us next week and see our progress here at Rocky Neck.